If you are wishing to know more about fishing, you don't need a book. Just come and see the book and the cook. If you are looking to know more about cooking, you know where to look. Just come and see the book and the cook. Scotty will hook them, and Paul he will cook them. They like to travel and learn new stuff. Come and see the hook and the cook. We're up early this morning and we're on the road. Heading south of Sydney into the Royal National Park. The Royal National Park boasts a spectacular coastline of around 30 kilometres from Bundoona to Otford. It's actually the world's second oldest national park after Yellowstone in the US. There are some excellent walks through the park, rainforests, coastal cliff faces, pristine beaches and excellent fishing spots. You'll also find a number of unique cabin communities that were established during the Depression. South of Sydney today at Burning Palms in the Royal National Park. We're heading in to do a bit of rock fishing. It's very important when you head off on these adventures to notify people where you're heading for the day. The weather's not the best, but we're off to have a bit of fun anyway. When you're walking in these sort of conditions, nice and moist and burn a bit of rain, these little fellas come out everywhere. A little leech. So just keep an eye on your, your boots, they tend to get inside your socks and uh, when they get in there you won't even know they're there, so just flick them off. To get rid of them but, a little bit of salt or a bit of vinegar will normally get them. Wow. Half an hour out of Sydney. What you got there through Mark, look at that, absolutely yeah. beautiful. How nice is it, eh? Yeah. Burning Palms is one of four cabin communities located within the park. Most of the shacks were built during the depression of the 1930s. These days the cabins are privately licensed and well maintained. There's no access by road so all materials have to be carried in via the path we've just walked. Scotty was on a mission to get to that fishing platform. But with all my cooking gear, and in the wet, I was struggling to keep up. Oh, mate, hurry up. Let's, <laughs> let's get into it. Dragging the chain. There's fish to be caught. Mate, I'm a chef. You know, I'm not used to this hard work. And climbing over three and a half k's just to catch a fish. We'll just go down the fish markets and go. OK, we're out on the southern ledge today. Nice little guttering behind us here. We're going to be targeting Drummer, Ludrick, Brim, Trevally. I'm using nippers for bait. We find a nice bread burley, soak plenty of water, mince it up really fine, works really well. I only need one decent fish for my cook-up today, but it's looking like a tough assignment. The conditions are making it really difficult. Scott come close to landing a couple, and unfortunately he lost them right at his feet. As the day rolls on, the pressure mounts. No fish, no dish. November and it feels like it's the middle of winter. I was soaked and starving and for a moment I considered what a rock cod curry would taste like. Well we were beaten by the weather today. Those clouds didn't lift until late in the day and the seas weren't being friendly at all. 
I lost two really good drummer on the rocks, but sometimes that's fishing. We decided to pack it in for the day and try again tomorrow, as the weather is expected to drop overnight. I can't say I'm looking forward to lugging my gear all the way in again, but this spot is spectacular, and I'd love to get a hold of some decent fish. Fingers crossed for the morning. Up next, what a difference 24 hours makes. Well, we're back here again, and to our relief, the weather looks much better. Our legs are a little sore from the hike in yesterday, but we're both keen to get amongst some good fish today. I'll stop here at the bottom of Burning Palms, get a bit of fresh water. These creeks run all through the National Park. Don't drink too much, just drink a little bit. The fresh water is filtered as it comes down through the scrub and across the sand. Beautiful. Tastes like pilchards. A few nippers mixed in. <laughs> oh, it's nice. I'm so glad we're back today with a clear morning sky and the sun about to burst through. You realise how spectacular the coastline is. It's simply stunning. We're really hoping for a nice drummer today. So we're floating prawns around the washes and creating a bread burley to get them interested. The burley is working a treat, and it's not long until we start seeing some action. Nice drama from the rocks, amongst the white water. I'll tell you that, bread burly really brings them on the bite. Drama, rock blackfish. Love the white water and amongst the boulders you can see behind us here. That's their home. Also too, you'll find Ludrick, Rim, Trevally. A little wider out the back, you've got a good chance for Taylor, Salmon maybe even a bonito or a kingfish. So fishing close around the white water and boulders and you'll do really well. <laughs> Finally the cook gets one. A simple rig that I use when targeting drummer off the rocks is a number one hook small ball sinker and a running bobby cork, straight to the hook. Another little uh, rock blackfish. I'll put this guy back, we've got enough uh, for a nice feed. I can't tell you how good that felt to get onto some fish early, after coming up empty handed yesterday. Now these are a fairly common species along the rock ledges. It's a pepper cod, or what we regard as a boot. In other words, they like eating an old boot. So I'll let this fella go, pop him in here, and he'll find his way back to the ocean. Not many people use the Aussie salmon, and uh, I'm telling you now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. Beautiful, fresh. Yeah, they're not regarded as a great eating oh. fish, but. People, oh, honestly, like they don't know what they're missing out on, they really don't. If we smoke this up now, you'll have the nicest bit of fish you've ever tasted. 
Some of the gear we use today, quite simple, small tackle box, just with enough gear. A range of different floats is very important. A decent sized bait bucket, deep enough you can lay pilchards in there. You have plenty of room for your prawns. A nice long rod, that's a 12 foot rod. The reel that we're using is a Shimano Sferos 8000 FB. Nice heavy duty reel, spooled up with 15 kilo, Power Pro braid, and a nice Snyder mono leader. But keep your gear to a minimum. Remember, you've got to pack it all into your backpack and carry it into these spots. One thing to take into account when you're fishing the rock safety, always keep your eyes on the water. Probably the most important thing is footwear. These are rock plates, give you fantastic grip on the sandstone. Just on volcanic rock, go for a flat sand shoe. A flat soled sand shoe, like these, much better than the plates. These tend to skate around on the volcanic rock. Another essential item I always carry is a throw ball and a good length of rope. It's just simply a, an old softball with a hole drilled through it, short cord and a good length of rope. If someone does happen to go into the water, you've got something to throw to them. And always fish with a mate. Never fish the rocks by yourself. Two eyes are always better than one. Up next, the cook fires up the smoker. Reese is just starting to come up, we're just getting out of the wind because I want to set my smoker up. We're going to smoke the fish up today. It's going to be uh, a smoke drummer on Caesar salad. Oh, it's a spin of Caesar salad anyway. I want to slowly smoke uh, the fish today. I don't want to uh, cook it too quickly with all types of uh, fish protein. Um, it's best to cook it a little bit slower. It, uh, it should really, it just sets the protein. It's going to be really, really tender. I can't wait to taste it. I'm starving. These are the wood chips that I've got. Quite an oaky smell. Don't need too much, just gonna pop that in there. Add a splash of fresh water. It just helps get the smoky flavor into the fish. Then just pop on your lid and light her up. Just to catch fish and then cook them within like, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes of bringing them out of the water, it's just gonna blow me away, it really is. Hey, looking over there, Paul. <laughs> I'm going to uh, get this nice drummer here, filleted it up for Paul. He's over there with the smoker. So let's get started. First, we're going to scale him. I've got a nice fresh pool behind me here, which helps. So we'll just get the scale off him. Do both sides. These are a fantastic eating fish. Okay, we take the fillets off this fella. We start up here and just work our way down and then out through the backbone. They're a chunky fillet. Slice that section out, which is mainly all the rib bones. Look, look at how beautiful that is, absolutely beautiful. Very underrated fish, I mean, it's just, as, just as nice as snapper fillets. Absolutely superb. I'm just going to dry these off now. And then we're going to pop them on our smoker. I've got the smoker going over there. That little salmon I just caught, we're going to knock the fillets off him now and do him in the smoker. Australian salmon fresh is the best way to weed them. Same as the drummer, just work from the front all the way back, follow the backbone, just set that aside. Take out the rib bone. Ready for the smoker. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of oil on our salmon and our drummer fillets so it doesn't stick on the smoker. I'm going to throw a little bit of salt in the skin as well, just to crisp that skin up a little bit. As you can see, we've got our smoker going. It is looking absolutely awesome. Straight away, I put my fillets down, lengthways across the bar. And what we're doing is actually hot smoking our fish today. This is the drummer. We're actually hot smoking the fish. Now, because it's a fresh fish, a lot of times when you're smoking fish you'll put it in a brine. But today I don't need to put it in a brine. It's fresh fish. I want to taste, I just want to lightly smoke it. I don't want to have any sugar or any vinegar sort of flavours on there. The only thing that I'm going to do is halfway through the smoking is I'm going to squeeze some lemon on, on top and I'm gonna add a little bit of cracked pepper. It's absolutely beautiful. Now 
generally you would normally you would make a, a mayonnaise with yolks only, but um, I just don't want to waste the whites today. Scott's getting wet in the background there. I'm going to need his help in a second. Now it's very, very important when we're making mayonnaise is to make sure that we whisk for quite a long time to incorporate air and break the protein down. As you can see, it's lightly fluffing up now. Scott, can you just, oh, he's just landed a fish. That's fantastic. I'm getting really wet over there, but I've just got another one. He's missing a fin from here. Something's going on there. I'll tell you what, he's still healthy, but not that fantastic. Primary. I'll let him go, eh? Hey mate, after you've finished fishing, you want to come and give me a hand making the food? <laughs> and start adding the oil really slowly. Beautiful. I'm just going to, I like plenty of garlic. You like garlic, Scott? Love garlic. You love garlic. But I tell you what, I'm going to leave you to it. I'm going to go and catch myself another fish. <laughs> now then. Put the seeded mustard in there, just gives it a piquant sort of flavour. Sorry about that, just going to give it a quick wipe off. That'll tell Scott. Alright, there we go, just mix that in. Add anchovy fillets, a squeeze of lemon, and salt and pepper to taste. Okay, guys, I'm just going to check how the fish is going. That is absolutely beautiful. Now we're going to put some lemon juice on there. Incorporates a bit of flavour. I'm not worried about a few pips on there. We're outdoors, you know, we're not in the restaurant today. We're having fun. A little bit of crack like pepper. And that looks absolutely wonderful. Now to take this off, pop it here, out of the way. I'm going to put the lid on there. And we'll leave that there. It'll carry on cooking. Also, what's good about it, keeps any flies or any insects off there. After the break, we tuck into that smoked fish. <laughs> Beautiful garden salad that'll go with our salmon fillers. <laughs> the secret with, uh, with when you make any type of salad is to dress it almost the last minute. Now, if the lettuce is too wet, what will happen is obviously oil and water don't mix. So your mayonnaise will start slipping off the salad. Now that's probably just enough for one. Now I've got some bacon here that are pre-cooked. Just put it in the grill on a tray so all the oil would drip through so it's nice and dry. Okay, that's a little bit of saltiness going in right there. And we've got our anchovy fillets from before, just going to throw a couple in, not too many. I'm just going to put some dressing on here now. Not too much, just enough to uh, cover the lettuce. I'm not going to overdress this salad at the moment. I've got more ingredients to go in this. But I'm not going to put them in until I'm actually putting it into the bowl. I've got some beautiful parmesan cheese here, some shards of parmesan cheese there to go in. Just a couple of olives. I'm going to pop this in our bowl. This is our base of our salad that we're going to sit our fish on. And I've got some absolute beautiful little goodies over here as well that I did earlier. So what I have, I've got some semi-dried tomatoes that we're going to put on the salad. This gives them a bit of colour. We've got some asparagus that I boiled for maybe one minute only and then put them straight into ice water. Okay, it gives the salad a little bit of crunch. Some more olives go on top. Some more tomatoes. I'm going to put some eggs. Just quarter your eggs. Put them around the side, like so. It's starting to look really vibrant and colourful. More asparagus for good luck. I do like my asparagus. Okay, now for the the main part of the dish is our smoked fish. Looking absolutely beautiful. The reason why I leave the skin on there is just to protect the actual fish. 
That's how moist it is. I'm going to break that off. Now people tell me that this isn't a good eating fish. Salmon, smoked, Aussie style. Absolutely beautiful. Pop this in our Caesar salad. I'm going to take a little bit of the blackfish. Look how moist that blackfish is and white. Look at that, the fillets just peel off. Absolutely beautiful. Now, just to finish the dish off, I put a little bit of my mayonnaise in one of these squeezy bottles. Great, these are, these fantastic. You've got to get these at ham. Straight over the top, that's our finish with our dressing. A little bit more cheese on top. And there we have it. Smoked fish Caesar salad, burning palm style. This loaf, mate, just to get back up that 30 pounds. <laughs> up the hill. Up the hill. <laughs> the, the more we eat, the less we have to carry. This is a really special place. It feels like you're miles away from anywhere, yet Sydney's just over the hill. The escarpments and the rock platforms are truly impressive, and the beaches make me wish it carried me boarding. I feel like we've only just scratched the surface there. You could spend a month of Sundays exploring the park and still not feel like you've seen everything. Yeah, you're right. There's hang gliding off Ball Hill, the Weir at Orderly, and of course the other 27 kilometres of coastline we didn't walk. I think I might have to plan some trips with the family. Absolutely, mate. Sounds like a plan. It's been fantastic. about burning palms, they should call that burning thighs. That was a hard walk. Red burly trail that we've been doing today. Finally suck a little bit of blood, mate, and they'll leave you alone then. I just after the English royal blood. Their home is amongst these boulders you can see behind us here. Bloody fly, can you believe it? Oh, it's a wild man look, have I? No, he's a good boy. Oh, yeah.